So topic that comes up a lot um, that the therapists have shared with me is parents will ask, you know, my, my kiddo doesn't have any friends. Um, and there's, um, there's many things to look at when that's going on. But um, I can tell you that some of our kids really struggle with social skills and sometimes they're a little bit less mature and um, that may uh, make other kiddos feel uncomfortable. Um, I always recommend if those things are going on really look at your kiddo and talk to him and ask him what's going on at school what what things you know is there anybody you like is you know how can we make this work better we um, are actually talking here about creating a social media platform where parents can connect with parents with kids that have similar interests um, and sort of have play dates and create that environment that's soon to be coming probably next year but um, we've had a lot of kiddos here that actually are, have become friends but due to HIPAA we can't really say that they're friends but we want to create a platform so we don't have to be involved and you can actually meet the kids mom and say hey let's take them to a restaurant together let's have a play date so um, there are uh, many avenues to go through but the other thing I want you to realize is we have kiddos here some that are very low functioning some that are very high functioning you know, there's friendships that develop no matter what your level of function is, uh, whether you have a disability or whether you're fully able. Um, in school, I had special needs kids in my class, as did my, my sons, and um, they were special needs. They had neurotypical peers. So kind of the stigma that we have as adults where we divide off and think, okay, special needs with special needs, autism with autism, neurotypical with neurotypical. That's not necessarily the case at all in a classroom. We have so many um, kids that love to help other kids and really want to be their friend and help to make that connection. But um, so, you know, talk to your therapist. They are an excellent resource on um, how your kid's doing because when we do therapy here, a lot of times your kid's engaging other kids. So realize that's going on. If they tell you there's a deficit and you're not in speech therapy, I highly recommend you listen to them. We don't want to wait so far and then intervene. We want to intervene as soon as we can. That's also the reason why we offer social skills groups periodically throughout the year so that we can address um, how do we initiate a conversation? How do we realize when a friend's done talking to us? Things like this that we, um, we do very easily but our kids struggle with. So. Um, Make sure you look at social skills. That's a big part of it. And um, like I said, talk to your therapist. They have great insights.